Blackbeard's Life and Piracy. Edward Teach, better known as Blackbeard, was a notorious English pirate who operated in the West Indies and along the eastern coast of the American colonies during the early 18th century. He is remembered as one of the most famous and fearsome pirates of all time, renowned for his long black beard, his ferocity in battle, and his ability to strike terror into his victims. Early Life Not much is known about Blackbeard's early life, but it is believed that he was born in Bristol, England, around the year 1680. He may have been a sailor or a privateer before turning to piracy, and he may have served in the Royal Navy during the War of the Spanish Succession. Some sources suggest that he may have been a slave trader before becoming a pirate. Piracy Career Blackbeard's career as a pirate began in 1716, when he joined the crew of Benjamin Hornigold, a pirate captain operating in the Caribbean. Hornigold recognized Blackbeard's potential as a leader and gave him command of a sloop, which he used to plunder ships along the coast of Virginia and the Carolinas. In 1717, Blackbeard captured a French slave ship and renamed it Queen Anne's Revenge, which would become his flagship. Blackbeard quickly gained a reputation for his ruthless tactics, which included intimidation and torture of his victims. He would often light slow-burning fuses in his beard and on his hat, causing smoke and sparks to surround his head and giving him a fearsome appearance. He would also tie lit matches or candles to his beard and hair, creating a glow that made him look even more terrifying in the darkness. In the fall of 1717, Blackbeard and his crew blockaded the port of Charleston, South Carolina, for several days, demanding medical supplies and other provisions in exchange for lifting the blockade. This incident marked the peak of his career as a pirate, as it demonstrated his ability to control and terrorize a major port city. In November 1718, the Royal Navy dispatched a force to hunt down Blackbeard and his crew. On November 22, a battle ensued off the coast of Ocracoke Island, North Carolina, in which Blackbeard was killed. His head was cut off and hung from the bowsprit of the Navy ship as a warning to other pirates. Legacy Blackbeard's legacy as a pirate has endured for centuries, inspiring countless stories, movies, and works of art. He has been portrayed in various ways, ranging from a brutal murderer to a charismatic rebel fighting against oppression. His name has become synonymous with piracy, and his legend has become a symbol of rebellion and resistance against authority. Conclusion Blackbeard's life and piracy were marked by violence, intimidation, and fear. His reputation as a fearsome pirate has endured for centuries, making him one of the most famous and notorious figures in history. His legacy as a symbol of rebellion and resistance against authority has continued to inspire people to this day, making him an enduring icon of popular culture. Queen Anne's Revenge is the famous pirate ship that was captained by the notorious English pirate Blackbeard in the early 18th century. The ship is best known for its role in Blackbeard's piracy career and for being one of the most famous pirate ships in history. In this article, we will explore the history and construction of Queen Anne's Revenge. History Queen Anne's Revenge was originally a French slave ship named La Concorde. It was built in Nantes, France, in 1710 and was owned by a merchant named Joseph Labouz. The ship was armed with eight guns and was used to transport slaves from Africa to the French colonies in the Caribbean. In 1717, Blackbeard captured La Concorde off the coast of Martinique and renamed it Queen Anne's Revenge. He added more guns to the ship and used it as his flagship for the next year. The ship was instrumental in Blackbeard's blockade of the port of Charleston, South Carolina, in 1718. After Blackbeard's death later that year, Queen Anne's revenge was abandoned and eventually sank off the coast of Beaufort Inlet, North Carolina. The wreck was discovered in 1996 by a team of marine archaeologists led by the private company and Tercel Incorporated. The wreck was later confirmed to be Queen Anne's revenge after artifacts recovered from the site matched those found on other pirate ships associated with Blackbeard. Construction Queen Anne's Revenge was a large ship for its time, measuring 102 feet in length and weighing around 300 tons. It was a square-rigged frigate with three masts and a crew of approximately 300 men. The ship was designed to be fast and maneuverable, which was essential for a pirate ship operating in the open ocean. The ship was armed with up to 40 guns, including 26 large cannon, making it one of the most heavily armed pirate ships of its time. The cannon were cast in England and France and were probably acquired through piracy or trade with other pirates. Archaeological Excavation and Recovery of Artifacts Archaeology is the study of the human past through the recovery and analysis of artifacts, structures, and other physical remains. One of the most exciting and rewarding aspects of archaeology is the excavation and recovery of artifacts, which provide insights into the lives and cultures of people from the past. In this article, 
we will explore the process of archaeological excavation and the recovery of artifacts. Excavation The first step in archaeological excavation is the identification of a site that is likely to contain artifacts or other physical remains. This may involve historical research, remote sensing, or other forms of investigation. Once a site has been identified, archaeologists will use a variety of techniques to excavate the area. Conservation and Preservation of Artifacts Artifacts are physical objects that have historical, cultural, or scientific significance. They provide valuable insights into the lives and activities of people from the past, and can help us understand the evolution of human culture and society. However, artifacts are also subject to degradation and damage over time, and must be conserved and preserved to ensure their long-term survival. In this article, we will explore the processes of conservation and preservation of artifacts. Conservation Conservation is the process of preserving and stabilizing artifacts to prevent further deterioration or damage. The goal of conservation is to extend the life of the artifact while retaining its original physical and chemical characteristics as much as possible. Conservation involves a range of techniques and processes, depending on the nature of the artifact and the type of damage or degradation it has suffered. These techniques may include cleaning, stabilization, repair, and protection. Cleaning is the process of removing surface dirt, dust, and other contaminants from the artifact. This is typically done using gentle cleaning agents and soft brushes or cloths. Stabilization involves the use of techniques to prevent further degradation or damage to the artifact. This may include controlling the temperature, humidity, and lighting of the environment in which the artifact is stored or displayed. Repair may be necessary for artifacts that have suffered physical damage or degradation. This can involve the use of adhesives, supports, or other materials to repair or reinforce the artifact. Protection is an important aspect of conservation, as it helps to prevent further damage or degradation to the artifact. This may involve the use of protective enclosures, such as display cases or storage containers, or the implementation of security measures to prevent theft or damage. Preservation Preservation is the process of protecting artifacts from damage and degradation in the first place. The goal of preservation is to ensure that artifacts are stored and displayed in a way that minimizes the risk of damage or deterioration, and maximizes their long-term survival. Preservation involves a range of practices and techniques, including proper storage, handling, and display of artifacts. This may include the use of appropriate materials and equipment, such as acid-free boxes, archival quality storage containers, and humidity-controlled environments.